Hey, what's happening everybody? This is Robert, the Leather Cowboy Muhammad right here, Premier Leather Crafters in the Dirty South. The Dirty South is where I lay my head with another helpful video that you guys, another giving you another weapon to put into your arsenal, another bullet to put into your gun, or another tool technique just to put into your case right there to help you guys out. Now, today's video is not focusing so much on nothing on leather carving, nothing on um, uh, leather stamping, per se, uh, nothing on stitching, braiding, none of that stuff. What we're going to do today is take this all the way back to the basics. And we're just going to do some basic, simple stamp work. I've selected three tools out of my tool chest. And let me give you guys those numbers real quick, just in case if you don't have them. But this is a Craft Pro tool. It's a basket weaving tool. Beautiful tool right here. I caught these on sale. Caught this actually on sale from Tandy. Um, they did a, a tool sale where they dropped all of their tools down to between $1.99 to $3.99. So now the great, that's one thing that I love about Tandy. Sometimes Tandy will launch those tool sales. And if you purchase enough from Tandy and if you get in good with the GM or the management staff at your local Tandy store, then hey, they'll send you out an email. Sometimes they'll even call you if the relationship is good enough and say, hey, look, cowboy, we got a sale that's coming up. XYZ, this date right here, starting at this particular time. You might want to get here early so you can go over some of the picks before everybody else just start coming in here buying stuff. You know, that's the great part that I love about Tandy. Now, you guys might have that relationship with some of the other uh, suppliers out there and if you do great but make sure that you have your number that they have your number to call you when they start doing these great new sales and just like I said this particular tool here is a craft tool pro which if you guys didn't know anything about Tandy you guys know that Tandy sells these things man they, they like uh, they like 20 bucks so sometimes they'll have these sales and sometimes they'll have sales where they discontinue and stuff and they drop the price down on this all the way down. I think I don't know what I paid for. I can't remember, but I do know the sale was like $1.99 to $3.99. And for a craft tool, that's phenomenal right there, especially on the Pro Series. But this particular pro, uh, tool here is the X2850, the X2850. I don't know if you guys can see that. But there it is right there, X2850. Now, and that's a basket weaving stamp tool um, that's put out by the Craft Pro Series. Craft Tool Pro Series. That's one that we're going to be using. Another one is, uh, this is another Craft Tool. And this is a geometric stamp here. And I'm going to show you do some different things to do with this geometric stamp or what I call a geometric stamp because the shapes that I have created with this, uh, they basically symbol symbolic symbolizes or to me they look like a geometric tool. And this one here is it's a craft tool again. And this one, oh my goodness, these numbers are real little bitty. This is a G54. I think that's a six, no, G548. G548. Let me make sure I got that right. G548. So with the G that's on here, it is a geometric stamp. G548. That's another one that we're going to be using. And then this one here is another one that I pulled out of that Craft 2 Pro Series sale. And this is another geometric stamp that I love this tool. And this is G2286. G2286. Now, if you guys know, like I know, when Tandy, when Tandy come out with the Craft 2 Pro Series, this is kind of like the upper echelon crust of Tandy products. Now, there is a little slight history on that, which I won't get into. I don't know if uh, Tandy want me to put their business out there, but let me just give you a little bit of insight. I think they're connected to when Barry King, or was it Beard, used to be with Tandy. So these tools actually came or originated from the series that those guys were uh, creating and making when they were with Tandy, but shh. We won't tell Tandy that that's what it is. So don't sleep on that. Now, I, I know 
Uh, Barry King's tools are like top of the line. They're very, they're not very expensive, especially if you're serious about your craft, but they can be a little costly. And from what I've seen, those tools run about 30 to 35, sometimes 40, 50 bucks. But on the Craft 2 Pro series, I think some of, from just what I've heard, not what I think, just from what I heard, that those are some tools that were designed when Barry King or maybe in Rob Bearden, uh, one of those two guys, but I, I think both of them used to work at Tandy. I'm not sure. But either way, the way this, from what I heard, don't hold me to that, just from what I heard, that when they was with Tandy, they was designing those two things. Something happened within the mix and they left Tandy and then now you have the uh, the Bearden tools and the Barry King tools. But those folks used to be with Tandy. Pretty much everybody that's out there that's a heavy hitter right now into the tooling world. They, at one point in time, was a part of Tandy. Tandy is the granddaddy of them all. So, but I, I said that to say this, not to smash on Tandy, not to smash or say anything bad about those two designers, but the Craft Pro Series are the top of the line products. So just like if you're getting those top of the line products from those particular websites, you can also just as well go to Tandy and then their regular price, regularly priced $19.99 to $24.99. So you're still paying half the cost through Tandy and you're getting the same quality type product. The stamping and the definitions are, are great especially when you're into stamping and tooling. So don't sleep on the Craft 2 Pro Series. It is good tools. They are great tools. But now, let's get off into this. And while I'm continuing to talk, I'm going to go ahead and start casing my leather because I want you guys to see exactly what we're going to do today. We're just going to do some simple tooling work, but the focal point and what we're going to focus on is the dyeing technique, the dye technique. And it's just some different things to put out there to where you don't have to bog your mind down with trying to come up with something creative all the time, something, something different all the time. You still can stay with the differences uh, in your design or into your tooling work, but rest assured, if you guys are like I am, you have way more tools at your disposal than trying to come up and draw a different pattern or a different uh, design and go into leather carving. Now, stamping doesn't take as long as leather carving because you don't have to worry about cutting all of those lines, backgrounding, shading, and this, that, and a third, and three quarters. You don't have to worry about all of that with stamping. All you have to do is focus on just keeping your flow straight, keeping everything lined up. You're still taking your time and doing the tooling work, but to make that particular piece or whatever project or piece that you're working on, to make that piece pop, we're going to do some different techniques to bring all of that out. So, right now we're at the eight minute mark and I don't want to keep you long, but we're just going to get right off into this. So I'm going to angle this camera down to my stamping table and uh, we're going to just do some basic, simple techniques and patterns. Now. First thing first, as always, you guys, all right, let's try to move this camera in a little bit so you guys can definitely have a bird's eye view. We're going to drop this down some too as well. And I should have done all of this because now we're getting off into the timing part of the project and I don't want to keep you guys long. All right. So, first thing we're going to do is take our wing divider and we are going to section off just as if you were working on a wallet, belt, it doesn't matter what have you. We're going to lay our first scribe line down. Then we're going to separate that a little bit to give us a little bit of channel and border around, if you guys are doing a belt, is give you just a little bit of border around that particular piece. Now, I'm going to take the um, the basket weave stamp. All of these are Craft Pro series with the exception of the geometric shape here. So we're going to take the basket weave. This is the X2850. And I'm just going to lay down a simple design. I'm going to come all the way over here. And if, if this was a belt, 
I'm going to lay down this right, lay this down, right down the middle of my belt. Now, the great thing about this particular tool is you can turn it every time you stamp. This is what gives you that basket weave look. It's like you're threading or lacing an old basket. Just to give you an example. And then you can come right back and turn this stamp the opposite way. And I'm going to show you guys this in a hot second. You just have to make sure that everything is lined up and stays, and stays uh, straight. But just to give you an idea of what we're working with. And you will alternate this stamp all the way down the course of your work. That's the great part about this. I don't know who came up with this, but this would look great on, to me, not just a belt, but it would look great on a cuff. If you was doing a leather cuff, even if you was doing a larger product, let's just say like a, 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 a day planner or something like that. Let me show you guys that. Man, isn't that hot? That's popping right there. Uh, man, let me give you a little light so you can actually see that. I don't want to blind you to death, but I definitely want you to see what we're working with. Hold up. Let me angle that up just a little bit. There we go. Now, see that print and that design and that layout? That is exactly what we're trying to achieve is this. Now, the thing with this is with the X2550. Now, let's go to another stamp real quick. And so you guys can see. Just as now with this step here, the other Craft Pro series, this is the G2286. The G2286. Now, with this particular tool, you want to lay you down a scribe line to give you a, a, a baseline. What I like to say, a baseline. Everything is going to flow off of this baseline here. The line you just scratched. Now, if you don't have a wing divider, uh, now, if you're working diagonally on a, uh, a cuff, now, here's a prime example. This is a cuff that I'm working on. I'll show you guys this. I use this particular tool on this cuff. And the way I ran this, I ran a diagonal line from corner to corner, and that was my baseline that I laid out my stamp. Now, this is not only going to make these star shapes, it's also going to make it's also going to make circles around these star shapes, hence the geometric design. So let's go ahead and go with that. And you can run that line straight, diagonal, um, something to give that piece a little particular character. And you're just going to lay the points on the line. That's what we're going to do. And you're going to work this all the way up the top to the top of whatever piece you're working on. And it's nothing complicated, nothing complex. Uh, it's just simple stamping work. But this is not even the hard part about the project. The project, we're going to focus on the, the dye process, which I, I'm looking like I might have to come back with another video. Man, now, now, what we're going to do different with these geometric shapes, I'm going to take this same star and line it up against all of my points. I'm going to line it up against my point. Let me give you a pointer here. I'm going to line it up against this point, that point, and the point in the middle between these two uh, stamps. So that one, that one, that one. I'm just going to line up all of the points. And this is what's going to make our circle shape around each geometric shape just to give you an idea of what we're working with and again if you're getting close to the border on your work all you're going to do is tilt that tool back a little bit tilt it back a little bit we don't want it to stamp all the way across but we want the work to look finished and then I'm seeing something that I need to drop you guys on a little jewel there. there. Uh, but see, we don't want it to stamp all the way on this end. We just want it to fade away. 
or it just wanted to fade away as if I was going up against a border. And the same thing I'll do on this side, which we'll is flip this over, and we're going to meet, match up all of our points. Match up all of the points. And if you're taking your time and you're on top of everything, everything will line up perfectly and symmetrical, and it will turn out the work to be beautiful. Now, this particular piece is very nice on a belt or a cuff. You guys can see that. Let me angle this back up and get away from the light. But there it is. Another shape where you can take your tools. This is the stamp here. But the way you lay your stamp out is the way that it will also create another shape. And it's that circular shape, which is something else we're going to do with the dyeing process. Now, I think I'm going to stop right there because I don't want to get too far off into that. So let's go ahead and adjust our camera back up. And we're just going to go ahead and get right off into the meat and potatoes of why we want to uh, go into how this is going to die properly. Now, as you can see, and I showed you as in this piece, this piece you can see I used that geometrical stamp and stamped it in there. Then I came back with a nice little camouflaging tool and stamped around that. Now this is an inlaid stone cuff. So when this is all finished, said and done, this will be wrapped with latigo lace going around the side. And then I will attach my buckle and strap through here. You guys can see that and it'll be stained and dyed. And this will, now what I've done, I took some tan coat Tan coat is great for resisting. It is a great product to use to resist. Now, uh, you can also use Super Sheen. You can also use Resiline. Um, if you want to, you can go to Tandy and buy the Pro Resist, which I don't think, if you look at the Pro Resist and you look at the Super Sheen, to me it's the identical same product. They just put a label on it called Pro Resist. Sorry, Tandy, but I just got to keep it real with the people who are out there watching this video. So I'm not going to, I'm not the type of guy that's just going to tell you to just go out there and spend your money because I'm a Tandy guy and I like shopping at Tandy. But hey, I'm hard on Tandy just like I would say the same thing about any other product that they sell. I mean, to me, Pro Resist and Resiline is just, it's the same thing. But this particular case where I want to use the tan coat, to me, tan coat resists antique gel uh, dye or antique gel better than anything else in the world. Now, with the Super Sheen, with the Pro Resist, and with the Resiline, if you, once you wipe that antique gel on top of that, even if you did the three coats over a three-day period, 72 hours, it still will turn the resist a little dark color. Now, the only thing that I have found that totally, and you guys can see I use mine. So the only thing that I found that, that, that totally resists, or it totally repels any type of dye, with the exception of alcohol dye. But you, you, I wouldn't even know why anybody would want to put alcohol dye and try to do that so don't don't ever do that but if you're using antique gel um because i kept wondering how some of these other crafters when they resist the part of the leather project that they wanted to stay tan two things kept popping up tan coat and leak lac those are the two products that kept coming up as the best resistor that was out there on the market. Everything else was just keeping your leather and stuff clean. You'll see a lot of crafters, a lot of old school crafters use plastic gloves. Now, here we go. I use mine too as well, and with the exception of in this video. Maybe I need to start doing that so you guys can get used to start using those as well on your own. But you can go buy a box of plastic latex gloves from Harbor Freight for $1.99. You don't have to go ahead and unless you just know somebody that's a, that's a connect in the nursing and doctor's field where you can just get gloves from them. But I, I go to Harbor Freight and you can get a, a box of a uh, 500, I think 100, box of 100, a case of 1,000 uh, from Harbor Freight at $1.99 a box. Not very expensive. 
Not very expensive at all. But you can use that to keep your leather clean on the parts that you, especially you want to resist. You don't want the oil and the salt from your hands to start showing up into your products because this is what you will get. Just said I want to leave that example. Thank goodness that this particular piece is going to be dyed dark brown so nobody be able to see that. And then, but uh, that would have been terrible if that had showed up into the part of this cuff that I wanted, didn't want to change the alter the color, the natural color of the level. So getting back, uh, we just I, I went ahead and resisted this with the tan coat still. I'm still a believer in the three coats, 24 hours period in between each coat to fully resist. Now I'm going to come back with a dark brown antique gel, and then I'm that's the part that's going to make this piece pop. Now, it's simple work. It's just a simple glass stone that's in the center of this cuff. Simple stamp work, nothing fancy, nothing carving and all that. So you don't have to get into all of that stuff. You don't have to bog your mind down with, oh man, what can I do to make this piece specifically for this particular customer? Now, that's just one thing that i done, uh, and it happened strictly by accident. It was because I kept forgetting what I'd done to the last piece. And that just worked for me to um, not keep duplicating the same work. So I put that into my marketing pitch was, hey, everybody has their own individual piece which is true. That's not by design. So unless you're one of these crafters that are just taking orders and you're trying to work on everybody's stuff all at one time, then, um, which I don't know any crafter that would do that unless you just got one particular customer that just put in one large sum or order. But even still in that, a lot of the crafters nowadays are still just using a base uh, one or two templates or one or two craft days and they're just working those and just dying up different colors you can do that if you choose and want to but it's still when you look at it let's just say somebody put an order in for five pieces two or three out of those pieces are going to be the identical same they might change the flower but the scrolls and all of that stuff will still be the same so to keep your mind from being bogged down don't get away from what built your business don't get away from what got you into leather crafting or whatever business that you're in. Don't get away from your root. And stamping was my root. This is where I started. Um, anybody who's gotten up into the leather world, we all started with stamping. The majority of us started with stamping. I don't know too many crafters who just went straight all in into leather carving, unless they was an artist in a different particular field and they just took to it like a duck to water. But... Anyway, um, just simple stamps, simple stamping, and this is three coat, and you guys can tell the difference between this part and that part. The outside part has not been treated, the only, or resisted, only the center part has been resisted because I want the focus to be on the stone, and I don't know if you guys can see that. The stone has a little design in it. And I want, it's already inlaid. So when that particular customer, when this particular customer puts it on, the stone will be the focal point and the stamping work is going to be enhanced because it has been resisted. And then I'm going to antique gel this dark brown. And then we're going to wrap this in latigo lace all the way around it. Just going to do a running lace all the way around that piece. And that's what's going to bring the attention back to the stone and the tooling work. So, and you guys can do that with any of these. You can do that with any of these particular stamps. Now, I didn't get a chance to do the, uh, the other stamp, which I will follow this up again. But it's still a great tool. As a matter of fact, let me just plug in a couple just to show you what it looks like. With the same technique as a geometric stamp, the same technique, and what it's going to do is not going to make it a round circle, but now it's going to take more of a shape of an octagon, and I didn't put my glasses on to do this, so you guys forgive me if 
This is a little kooky. But I just want to show you that the, uh, see it's an octagon shape more than it is a round shape. And it's still that same geometric tool. Now, the great part about the geometric stamps is when, when you, you can do this one of two ways. I would suggest one technique would be to completely resist the leather before you start stamping, before you start doing anything. Resist the whole entire piece or the piece that you want to be resisted. So in other words, in this cuff, I would have cut the shape out, did my border, cut, cut my borderline in there, backgrounded that, and then I would have resisted everything before I even started putting my geometric stamp in here. Now, the reason why I tell you to do that is now once you start the stamping part of it, that tool is going to make the impressions into the leather. So now, if I wanted to come back and antique gel the whole entire thing, now my antique gel will fall into the, the impressions on the leather, and that's just going to make that particular design pop even harder because it's into the grooves of the impression. Now, in that particular piece, I would use a antique paste, not just the gel, but I would use the paste and I would work that paste into each one of the impressions. And then when you wipe that off, it's going to take off all of the smooth uh, part. The, uh, the gel, is, the paste is going to be removed from all of the smooth part of that particular piece. And, but the paste is going to stay into the impressions, into the cracks, into the crevices. Now, you can change that up again on another part is you can go ahead and do all of your stamping tool and work as into this basket weave, then resist it, and then what you do when you come back to antique that particular part, the resist even into the impressions, it would resist the antique gel, which would give it a whole entire different look, a whole entire different look. or. If you didn't want to go with the resistant work and you have your airbrush kit, then you can spray any of these pieces. You can spray that uh, a light color, or if you don't even want to touch the center of that, you just take your airbrush and go around the border or the edge of that particular project, and then you can fade it in from a dark color to a lighter color. And then even if I wanted to play around with this to give it a little Aztec look, uh, I can put a little bit more creativity into just painting the center circles of the geometric stamps or even painting the outside smooth part of the geometric stamp and then that gives it a whole new entirely different look. Hey, I kept you guys longer than what I wanted to but I had to get that little bit of information out there to you guys uh, because I've been promising to do more videos and I'm going to get back on it. I just have a lot just going on in the world. If you haven't started your Christmas orders or taking Christmas orders, you guys need to do that now. We are really getting down to the wire on Christmas orders. And just to give you a helpful hint, two weeks into December, the United States Post Office will not guarantee delivery. No matter even if you put it on next day mail and spend a whole bunch of money to try to get it there next day or three day, they won't guarantee it. It happens every year. None of the carriers are going to guarantee deliver, delivery two weeks into December. So if you haven't started taking Christmas orders, I encourage you to start opening up doing that now. That way it does, it's not so hard on you because after Black Friday, me, myself, this year, which I've learned from previous years, once Black Friday hit, I'm going to be on vacation for the whole entire month of December, even going into after January. That's my rest period every year. And you guys may not want to do that. You guys might want to keep getting that money all the way up. But if you know like I know, last minute gift purchases are not good in our industry because leather crafting takes time. Leather crafting takes time. It does. And so for somebody to come in and say, hey, now I do know some crafters, they'll put that tax on them. 
<laughs> when you come in and, and you're talking about you want a last minute Christmas gift and then Christmas is two days away. Yeah, I know some crafters, they put that tax on it. I do know some that put that tax on it. So if that's what you want to do and a customer willing to pay for it, hey, do what you do. Make your money, homie. I ain't mad at you. Go get, get that bag. But that's what I, uh, but as for me, I'm so bagged up and bogged down right now. I, I cut mine off after, uh, definitely Black Friday. There's no more orders taken after Black Friday. And if I can hold to it, there will be no more orders taken after November the 15th. So that's a wrap for me. I mean, because I'm trying to get all my stuff lined back up. And then, uh, as you guys know, Tandy also launches their Christmas sale on their tools, which you guys, these tools will be back on sale. And if you bog down with taking orders, you're going to miss that sale from Tandy. Hey, look, this is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad right here at Premier Leather Crafters in the Dirty Dirty with another helpful video. Go back to what's simple. Keep it simple. Stamp work, you're not wrestling with your mind on, on how to what to be creative about. Just go back to your tools and change the way that you dye the piece or change the way that that uh, the finishing on the piece. I have seen a lot of work here lately where people just do the stamping work and they put a top finish on it and it's out the gate. That's it. They might do a saddle stitch. Or, or, or buck stitch in there just to give the piece a particular a, a little bit of color and just to change it up a little bit but hey this leather is a great time to be a leather craft and it's a great time to be in this industry is because everything is going right back to natural now hey like i said you guys keep working at it keep crafting at it and you're only going to get better just done the leather cowboy see y'all on the other side peace